This is the College Football Gambling Picks for week number 10. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. They got the Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, First Jackpot, Pot, First Jackpot, Pot, Hollywood Casino, and Fitz Casino. Somebody Good say Pot. Gracious, man. <laughs> We're starting off with a bang today. It's the Halloween edition. Boom. Gary Go dressed over. up. Yeah, I did. And I'm too cool for school, so Gary gave it, me a cowboy hat. Yeah. I, I'm not doing this again next year. This No, Walmart you look good. Paint. Hey, listen, you went out on a limb. You did something Walmart different. Walmart face paint. And this I, is uh, awful. Yeah. No, nah, you're all right. I think it looks great. <laughs> Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Sign up for the college football picks. Con- not college, but just football picks contest. You pick 10 games against the spread. We're going to give you seven college games, three NFL games. Last week, Donald B. from Corning, Arkansas, went 8-2. and two. Now, technically, I won the pick'em contest last week. Did you go 9-1? No, I went 8-2. I went and two, You won the tiebreaker. But breaker. I won the tiebreaker. So, we had like four guys that went 8-2 and two as well. If you went 9-1, went nine and one, yeah, I went, I'd, have, I'd have given you some ups. I uh, I went 8-2 and two last week, which is still pretty good. Oh, no, no, no that's great, dude. No, that's um, Come from a guy that can't pick a game to save his life. That's well, no, you did pretty good last week. So last week, I went five and two. That's good. That's you went good. four and three. I'm on a fourteen and seven span right now pretty, over the last three weeks. So I'm pretty doing good all right. run. Pretty good um, run. But you finally got off the snide. I did. You're four and three. I bet, Overall, I bet fourteen games this week. I lost four of the fourteen. I still lost money. I know, man. I don't. All, all games are not bet the same. Ah, uh, that okay. That makes all sense. games are not bet the same. As far as our picks go, you're thirty four <sighs> twenty eight and one. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm thirty four twenty eight and one. I was about to say, I'll take it. You are twenty eight. You are the exact opposite. Twenty eight, thirty four, and one. Close. Let's uh, let's close, jump in. Close second. All I'm right. gonna give you game number one for me. Go ahead. Air Force at Army. Army is a six and a half point favorite. Saturday, eleven a.m. It's on CBS Sports Network. Metrics have got Army minus thirteen. Now Army went to Air Force last year, won twenty-one to nothing. That is after Air Force dominated them for years. One of the things Jeff Monken wanted to do was fix those military games, where Army was just getting blown away. Couldn't beat Navy. Couldn't, couldn't beat, beat Air Force. Exactly. And he flipped that thing around. Beat them twenty-one to nothing last year. This year, Army is 5-1-1 one, one against the spread their last seven games. Air Force is 2-3-1 and one against the spread in their last six games. The metrics got this seven points off. I'm going to take it. I All got right. Army minus six and a half. All right. So we don't talk before the game. We don't talk before the, the podcast. We talk a lot before games. I'm going to go ahead and jump down to the, to the middle of my page. Army minus six and a half. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe we got the same games. We rarely do this. Last week we did it a couple of times. Yeah, we had two I games guess, last week. I guess I'm glad of that. It's probably two games of one. We we might have multiple this week. Um, yeah, I think I think this Army team is a lot better than they have been. I think, and I think you're right. I think they're making a point. We're gonna beat the other academies, and this year they get Air Force at home. Yeah, they're not going out to Colorado. Nope. And, and, and they get them 11 a.m. Yeah. Oh, early game. That's yep. right. Which I, is what I think 9 Army. Colorado I think Army now? will handle them. Yeah. I completely agree with that pick. Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of it. I like it, and I, I thought with you, I think, man, this this line's short. Yeah, it's real short. Okay, game number two, Georgia at Kentucky. I got the Wildcats plus ten. Saturday, two thirty p.m. on CBS. The metrics have got Georgia minus nine. Still really really close to that ten number. I know that Georgia's two three or two and three against the spread. Their last five as a road favorite. Kentucky is six and four against the spread. Five and five straight up in their last ten as an underdog. Look, Kentucky only gives up three point three yards per carry. That's number fifteen in the country. They only give up four point five nine yards per play. That's number thirteen in the country. Kentucky has done a good job of protecting the football. They are plus four in turnover margin in the last four games. If Georgia doesn't get turnovers from Kentucky, I think Kentucky has a shot to win the game. Wow. Bam. Yeah. You uh you almost had me sold to bet with you on this game until you compared Chris Allen to uh, Josh Allen, Josh Allen, whatever. That's a, you ain't some, watched that boy. Some I'm dude named you. Allen to Devin White, and that's <laughs> when I that's when you lost me. All right, my next gambling pick I'm going to give you the Big Orange, Syracuse minus five and a half against Wake Forest. Look, I've been I've been kind of liking this Wake Forest team a little bit. They won me some money a couple weeks ago. Listen, 
Syracuse is a really good football team. Wake Forest defense, not that good. I think Syracuse can score when they want, how they want, where they want. I think Syracuse wins this game. I don't know that they blow them out, but I think they cover the spread. What was your line, five and a half? I got them at five and a half. All right. Game number three for me. Give me them Iowa Hawkeyes plus three at Purdue, Saturday, 2.30 p.m. ESPN2. The metrics have got this one flip-flopped. Wrong team favorite. Iowa minus three is what the metric says. Iowa seven and two against the spread the last nine games. Purdue has not beaten a team with a top 50 defense so far. They only played two of them. Northwestern, number 50. Michigan State, number 41. Iowa is number four in total defense. Iowa's going to be looking to get back up off the mat after basically giving away the game at Penn State last week. You got first and goal on the three with less than four minutes left. Give me a friggin' break. Iowa comes in. They win the game outright. All right. Iowa plus three. Is this one of yours as well? At Purdue. No, let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you, There's a, there's a little bit of a theme here. I got a couple of games that are going to go this way. There's an old boxing term. You're a fight guy. You like this stuff. That styles make fights. Yeah. And this is one of those things where Purdue is built to beat up a team like Ohio State. Yeah. A team that finesse is team. finesse that's put up points because they can put up points in bunches, and if they get out ahead of you. You're playing catch up, and you can't play catch up well enough. And and the big physical teams just slow these teams down. They pull it in the mud, they dirty the waters, and they make it a lower scoring, hard nosed game. And they can't hang with them. Um, it's just my reason for liking Iowa. I think Iowa with you. I, road teams are always tough, but it doesn't matter. I, I love Jeff Brom. Doesn't matter. It's not going to be about his offensive schemes and abilities. I think Iowa's going to – defense is going to pull it down. I think Iowa's offense is going to be good enough to put up enough points win this game outright. I agree with you. Bam. Game number four for me, Notre Dame at Northwestern. I got Northwestern at plus nine and a half. Now, that line has jumped up to ten. It opened right. at seven. Yeah, it's, it, it's, and it just I don't know that it up. gets much bigger than 10, though, man. I can't see much more. I can't more imagine it. A but road double-digit favorite. Saturday, 6.15 p.m. on ESPN. Northwestern is 15-5 and five against the spread in their last 20 games as an underdog. That includes 12 outright wins. It, think about that. 20 times they have been an underdog. They've straight up won the game 12 times. They've right. covered 15 of them. Notre Dame is 3-8 and eight against the spread in their last 11 as a favorite. The metrics have this Notre Dame minus six. It opened at seven. It's been bet up to ten already. Another stat that if you watch the preview show, then you heard this. Notre Dame is one and eight straight up on the road against Power Five teams in November since 2013. As the season goes on, they tend to wear down. It doesn't matter who the Power Five team is. They end up getting smoked. The only one of those wins was against Pittsburgh in 2015, 2014, something like that. So... Yeah, I think Northwestern has a chance to win the game outright. Like, we know that Pat Fitzgerald does this, right? He plays up to competition. He plays down to competition. You got the number four team in the country coming into your house for the first time in, like, since the 70s. Like, Notre Dame hadn't been to Evanston since the 70s. Yeah, it's been a while. And Northwestern is looking to put on a show. I got Northwestern plus nine and a half. Once again, styles make fights. Texas, we talked about this a little bit in the pregame show. <clears throat> preview store texas minus one and a half at home against west virginia west virginia is a really good offensive team they are made to beat big 12 competitions teams that just it's just a boat race just one team's gonna score the other team's gonna score will greer great quarterback just want the ball last you got a chance to win the football game i don't see that <clears throat> i think texas's defense is good enough to slow down West Virginia, to not let them score at will. I think Texas runs a different kind of offense where they keep the ball a lot more, a lot more ball control, a lot more killing the clock, owning uh, the time of possession. I think Texas wins this game, and, and, and I don't know that they run away with it, but I think they can beat them by a touchdown. I mean, I like Texas to kind of beat up on a not-as-strong West Virginia football team. I like the pick. I like the pick. Uh, game number five, Fresno State minus 25 at UNLV. It's a huge line. Doesn't matter to me. Metrics have got Fresno State minus 27. It's Saturday at 9.30 p.m. It's on CBS Sports Networks. You can watch this along with the, uh, the Pac-12 after dark and, and all that stuff. 
Uh, Fresno is 22-4-1 against the spread in their last 27 regular season games. UNLV is 2-7 and seven against the spread in their last nine games as a home underdog. Fresno, number 15 in total defense, number four in scoring defense. Look, they did it to Hawaii last week. They're going to do it to UNLV this week. They are going to steamroll this bunch. Jeff Tedford, he is uh, he's auditioning for other gigs, in my opinion. I think he wants to keep this train rolling, and it turns out boosters like you a little more if you cover the spread every week. Oh, yeah. So, look, 25 may sound like a lot. Look, not when the metrics got you by four touchdowns. My next staying home, well, it's it's a road game, but it's our Memphis Tigers. Minus 13 at East Carolina. Look, I know Memphis hasn't looked great going on the road this season, but that's because they played some decent teams on the road. Okay. They they played Navy and, and Tulane. Tim, Tulane in the monsoons. No, I guess Tulane wasn't a monsoon. It was just rain. Yeah. They they went on the road. They played Missouri. Pretty good football team. Yeah. They're going to East Carolina. East Carolina is not a good football team. Everybody that's played them except for UNC has just had their way with them. I think Memphis is going to have their way with them. I think Memphis is going to score and score and score any time they want. I think they beat them by two touchdowns. They cover the 13. Take the Memphis Tigers. Lay all the points. Not, I can get down not with afraid it. at all. I can get down with it. Game number six for me. So we got, what, four games left? Uh, I got two games left. Yeah, I got two and you got two. Okay, all so right. four. Uh, Cal at Washington State. I got the Cougars. Minus 10 Woo. and a half. That's a lot of points. Saturday, 9.45 p.m. ESPN. The metrics have got Washington State minus 15 here. Washington State is number 12 in scoring offense. They're averaging over 40 a game. Cal is number 100 in scoring offense. They are averaging 24.9. Washington State is 8-0 against the spread this year. I think they're going to keep it going. Washington State, number 26 in total defense. Cal is number 17. Look, Gardner Minshew, 26 touchdowns, only six interceptions. Cal needs turnovers to keep this close. I don't think Minshew gives it to him. No, I'm with you. I think Washington State rolls all over Cal. I definitely think Vegas sees that they're 8-0 against the spread, and they're just trying to make that number bigger and bigger and bigger. And And they ain't made it big enough yet. Wow, okay. Next game, I'm going. So, you know, I got this saying, you ride a tushy buck, sir, you don't ride at all. Me, Me and Justin Fuente... And the the Virginia Tech <laughs> I don't Hokies know why you keep doing have, this have had this relationship where I'm giving everything and they're not giving nothing. So you know what? I'm out. I'm out. Give me the, the Boston College. <laughs> give, give me Boston College minus two and a half against West Virginia. They're at Watek. They got to go into Blacksburg. I don't know that I care. Well, Lane Stadium is not exactly as spooky as it used to be it not with this team not no. with this defense you know i might get burned okay if i get burned damn i get burned that's fine but i'm i'm done betting on this team until they can show they know how to show up for games man they have been a dog yeah yeah they so i'm gonna start betting against your ass all right game number seven utah state minus 18 at hawaii Look, this is one of those that we have told you about. It's a Hawaii special. What time does this game start? That's what I was getting to. If you have bet all day and you need something to get you back into it, put your money down on the Utah State Aggies minus 18, Saturday, 11 (laughs) p.m., and you can watch it on the stadium app. That's right. Stadium on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, you pull that thing up. Watchstadium.com is going to have you set to go. Metrics have got Utah State minus 17, so it's off by a point. Whatever. Utah State 7 and 1 against the spread this season. Hawaii is 1 6 and 1 against the spread in their last 8. Hawaii is playing their 11th straight game without a bye. They got housed last week at Fresno State 50 to 20. I think Utah State is about as good as Fresno State. 18 points ain't near enough. Ooh. I'm telling you, Utah State's going to put up like 50 something points. Okay. Yeah. And and Hawaii will not put up near that. So uh, yeah, Utah State, minus 18 at Hawaii, Saturday, 11 p.m. All right, my last game, I went with a guy. This, look, this is like an oldie but a goodie. Give me Mark D'Antonio. Going into Maryland, laying two points. Michigan State, look, this Maryland team, I hadn't figured them out. I think they're okay. 
I believe they're oh, great. They get, they get DJ Durkin back this week. I don't know that DJ Durkin's coming. Oh no, no, week. no. They they no, announced it today. No, no, no. They didn't. You you read that wrong. They said that the people that did the little investigation said he, they recommend him coming back. But now it's got to go to a whole different no, no, no. Like, it, group of it people. It went to that group of people this afternoon. And they made a decision in one day? They made the decision today. They are bringing Durkin back. He's back that's, in the building. He is coaching smart. this weekend. Do you? So let me ask you a question. Do you think the fans will show up to support him? Or will they stay away in... Like we're not happy about this move. What do you think? I'll tell you this: uh, he had a, a meeting with the football team today, and like some of the kids got up and walked out. One of them like called the the coach out in the middle of the meeting. Like I don't know, I I don't understand why they did it. I yeah, don't I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm, but, look, I but look, he will be not back. A, it's not an easy decision to make. Okay, I I I'm not telling you what I would do. I'm not. In, I'm grateful. I'm not in a position to have to make a decision like that. But I'm gonna tell you this: I think there's. There's chaos going on. I, I I knew about the the move to like recommend him, um, and uh, and then it went to this other group. Look, I I think Mark D'Antonio is a good coach. I think he's getting things figured out at Michigan State. They're not a good team. They're not a great team. They're a good team. They're really good defense. I think they're going to slow this offense down. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to Maryland there and win the game. I think they will. I I absolutely agree with you on that. Uh, I do have some leans this week. Now these ain't part of our picks. Gary I just, just I like to talk. Gary's just from time doing to so time. good. He's just throwing out all but the games. There's some of these that are just banana lines to me, right? Like it's. Look, I bet a lot of games so, too. I don't tell nobody about them. LSU plus fourteen. Kind of like that one. Okay. Uh, Penn State plus ten at Michigan. The metrics say that it should only be like six. Yeah, I, I mean, I could see where Michigan would cover this. Okay. I think double digits in a game like that. Might be a little much, but it, it could be because I don't know. I'm trying to talk myself into Michigan covering this by more than ten. I thought you were talking yourself into Penn State. Well, no, I'd, I'd already talked myself into Penn State. Now I'm trying to talk the other way around since you said something earlier. Okay. Uh, Stanford plus ten at Washington. Like Washington just got beat twelve to ten by Cal. Like, and I understand it's in Seattle, but either way, Stanford plus ten. Stanford doesn't really have bad losses. Like they lost to Utah. They lost to Notre Dame. They lost it, but they get blown out by good teams. I don't think Washington's a good team. Yeah, they uh, lost to Washington State. And then finally, Georgia Southern minus seven and a half at Louisiana Monroe. Like they should win this game a lot, like a lot bigger than that. Something's a little fishy about that home line, but either way. I'm so who put, are you on? What are you leaning? Oh, I'm a lean I'm a little lean. bit. Georgia Southern minus seven and a half. But you think it's fishy? I think it's fishy, but I'm still going to do it. But you're going to lean into the fish. I lean into the fish cool. every week, man. Every Happy week. Halloween, guys. Oh, are we supposed to do a rundown? No. Nah. You just don't want to. Not this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that.